Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Jeanette. We want to share some stories about times in our lives when we took our next step in generosity. We both were raised in families with modest means. My dad was a postman and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was a pipe fitter and my mom didn't work outside the home until my sister and I were in our teens. Even so, we both saw our parents sharing their limited resources with others in need. So when we married, we had the beginnings of generosity in our DNA. We joined a church soon after marriage. There we worked with the youth and Sunday school. We decided on a worship offering that we thought was a decent amount, and we gave it on the Sundays we attended worship. That was our start. Later, when our congregation conducted a campaign to retire debt, we heard about proportional giving. Jeanette and I talked about that, but we didn't feel that we were able to move to that level since we had two young daughters and Jeanette had quit her job to care for them full time. When we moved to another town and another church, we became even more involved in the life of the church. We both taught Sunday school and we helped in the nursery one Sunday a month. I joined the handbell choir and was active in Welka. I also volunteered in the church office and helped with vacation Bible school. And I was elected to church council. At one council meeting, another member of council said, you have to run a church like a business. That didn't sound right, but I didn't know exactly why. I knew that churches use accounting tools like income statements and balance sheets, but a church is not a business with a profit motive. Over time, we became more and more involved and we took another step in our generosity. Soon, we made another move to another city and another church. This time, it was a mission congregation. It was obvious that if this, this startup congregation was going to survive, it was up to us charter members, all 43 of us, including the children who signed the charter. One fellow member put it this way, we are the pioneers and our job is to blaze the path. So we were involved in everything Jeanette and I taught Sunday school. Jeanette helped in the church office. Holly and Leslie were very active in the youth program. And every time the church doors were open, we were there. Since our congregation was doing pretty well financially, the, the ELCA encouraged us to start raising funds to build our own congregation. When we started planning for the building fund campaign, we were encouraged to think about and pray about what might be possible instead of doing what we needed for our congregation to just survive. That what might be possible was much more than a vision of having our own building. It was a vision of what God could do in that place if we would commit to give our money, talents, and time. We took the next step in generosity and it was another step in the right direction. That mission congregation and Living Springs mission congregation were on similar paths. In fact, the two charters for the two churches were signed only a few weeks apart. For many of you, all of this probably brings back fond memories. That's when we moved back to Columbia after visiting several other Lutheran churches, including our first Lutheran church as a married couple, Leslie made a decision for all of us. It was going to be Living Springs. It is here that we came to understand that our offerings are not dues to the church. The offerings we make are our offerings to God, trusting that they will be used to grow God's kingdom here at Living Springs and elsewhere. It is here that we became aware that it all belongs to God and that whatever resources we have, our time, our talent, and our financial resources are all blessings from God. It is here that we started to grow toward proportional giving. One more time, we took the next step in our generosity. There's freedom in giving back to God a proportion of what God has so generously blessed us. There is freedom in trusting that God will decide how to use our gifts. <laughs>